The Buddha never talks about goodwill as a natural quality of the heart. He describes it as a determination, something you set your heart and your mind on. And remember that the Pali term jitta, which we translate usually as mind, can also mean heart. And the Buddha never made a clear distinction between the two. Your feelings have their reasons, and your reasons are accompanied by feelings. And goodwill has to be based on heedfulness. The realization that if you have ill will for anybody, you're going to do unskillful things. And so you have to talk yourself into goodwill, because it doesn't come naturally all the time. But don't think that just talking to yourself is not going to have an effect on your feelings. The kind of conversation that goes on in the mind has a huge effect on the feelings, which is why we repeat the Brahma Viharas every day, twice a day, as a group, to get those thoughts embedded in your mind. And it's why we don't just chant them in Pali, we have to put them in English. As an exercise, if your native language is not English, translate them into your own language and chant them to yourself every day. So the basic idea gets imprinted on your mind. Now don't expect that there won't be some resistance. You're actually trying to dig up the resistance. There will be a part of the mind that will argue. How about so-and-so? How about so-and-so? How about people like this, people like that? Then you have to think your way into why you might have goodwill for so-and-so and people like that. It may seem dry and artificial, but you're learning new habits. And just because something is habitual already doesn't mean that it's natural. You, you, you had to learn that habit at some point. So you're going to learn good new habits. Again, you keep reminding yourself that if there's any exceptions to your goodwill, you're leaving yourself unprotected. They talk about goodwill as protection. Think about that story of John Lee with the elephant. It wasn't a sentimental, rosy pink kind of goodwill that he was spreading toward the elephant that day. The elephant was threatening. And so John Lee had to have lots of strong goodwill. And the strength starts out by being able to say that to yourself, may this being, may this person, may this deva, may this hell being, may this whatever, be happy. Always go with that as your basic motivation. I saw a couple of times when a John Fung was called on to deal with spirits that inhabited people. And as he said, he never tried to drive them out. He started out with goodwill. And in some cases the Spirit would leave, in other cases it would stay, but it would stay on better terms. Because goodwill is based on the realization that we have to live in this world together with all kinds of people, all kinds of beings. And there's some that are threatening, there's some that are hard to like, 
but you can't let yourself have ill will for them. So you have to talk to yourself. Because if anything is natural, Fear can cause you to want somebody to disappear, want them to go away, want them to just not be in this world. And that state of mind that wants total security by wiping out threatening things actually ends up causing a lot more trouble than it resolves. We have to realize we have to live in the world with all kinds of people, all kinds of beings. And we have to protect ourselves first with our goodwill. So think your way to goodwill. And if you find yourself reacting to somebody in a negative way, just stop. Remind yourself, you don't have to like the person or like the being. But you have to think about that person or that being's well-being, so that your actions are skillful. And if you repeat this theme to yourself often enough and dig up all the resistance, you find that it does come more and more easily. It becomes more and more of a habit. Now you can live with people that are threatening, and not end up doing something unskillful to protect yourself. Provide yourself with skillful protection. There was a woman who came to see a John Fung one time. I would known her for years. She'd hang around Wada Sokaram. And she had visited Ajahn Fung a couple of times. And she was a very difficult person to live with. She had, if it were Western diagnosis, we diagnose her with Tourette's syndrome. She just start yelling at people for no reason at all. She came to see Ajahn Fung one day. She brought him a glass of sugarcane juice. He took a sip, and then he gave the rest of the glass to her and told her to drink it. She did. And all of a sudden, the symptoms came on. And John Fung, as he told me later, just spread lots of goodwill to whatever it was in her and said, Why are you doing this to this woman? Then the voice explained this woman had done some pretty nasty things to it in a previous lifetime. No one wanted to get back at her, it made it impossible for her to live with anybody. And John Fung said, If you do this, you know, next time around she's going to do the same thing to you. Do you want that? No. How about letting her have a normal life and make merit and dedicate the merit to you so you benefit too? Would you like that? Yes. And that was the end of the problem. So the woman lived with the spirit still, but on different terms. And this is the kind of goodwill we have to have. There are a lot of really difficult people, really difficult beings in the world. We can't make our goodness depend on someone else's being good to us, because that means that our, our most valuable possession is dependent on somebody else. We should not be a good position to be in at all. So you protect your goodness by protecting your goodwill. Remember the Buddha's analogy of the mother looking after her only child. So just as a mother would protect her only child with her life, so you protect your goodwill with your life. It's that important. So whether you feel it spontaneously or not, you have to get more and more habitual about thinking it. 
So that voice can remind you when your impulse is to do something unskillful. Okay, this is not going to help you, and it's not going to help anybody else. And over time, that attitude becomes more and more normal, more and more habitual. So it seems natural. Because you realize it's the safest way to live. 